Good evening, friends. My name is Pastor Jared Stein, and I am the new pastor here at Columbia Falls United Methodist Church, and I'm joined here with Pastor Pete today. And it's a privilege to greet you in the name of Jesus Christ and welcome you to this uh, combined Thanksgiving week uh, worship service. It's uh, a tradition between our two congregations um, to do special activities like this throughout the year, and it just felt like even in this season of pandemic, when we're seeking to do no harm and care for our community as best we can as, as witnesses to followers of Christ, that there should be a way that we could still offer an activity like this, a worship service together, where we can um, together give thanks to God through our combined traditions and sharing, through scripture, through communion, through song, and through psalm that we could do this year. This year. And so we, we figured out a wonderful way to bring that to you this evening, and we're happy that you've joined us this evening for worship. Um, you're going to see prompts uh, for readings, call to worship, opening prayer on your screen. Um, and we will have communion a little bit later after the prayers of the people. So I invite you, if you haven't already, um, gather together whatever elements are sacred and helpful to you and available in your home, whether that's bread or wafers, um, crackers, juice, tea, um, grape juice, whatever you have available to you, and, and get that ready so that you're ready for communion uh, when that time comes later in the service. That's all for our greeting and our gathering today. So won't you join me now in our call to worship? I'll read the regular print, and I invite you to read the bold. We welcome all who come to give thanks this day, all who join with neighbors in glad thanksgiving, acknowledging together the bounty of our lives. Let this flame rise, signifying our impulse toward God, our Creator. Let us rejoice together as we give thanks to the Lord. Won't you join me now in our opening hymn for the beauty of the earth.
It is greetings. It's good to be with all of you today for this Thanksgiving service. Uh, this is always one of my favorite uh, times of year, a chance to worship together with brothers and sisters in Christ from our, uh, our congregation that we're in full communion with as uh, Lutherans and United Methodists. So it's good to be with you. Happy Thanksgiving. Please join me in the opening prayer. Extravagant, generous giver of all good things, just as you brought the Israelites into a land flowing with milk and honey, a land where they could be free from bondage and oppression, you have brought us into this good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and corn, of fertile plains and majestic mountains. We give you thanks for the beauty that fills our tables, for the water that satisfies our thirst, for the beauty of this land where we are free to worship you in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Friends, for our first reading this evening, I invite you to look on the screen and join me as we read responsively Psalm 65. Pastor Peter has put the musical selection on the screen, and so I will sing it first so you can hear how it sounds. And then I'll invite you to join me in it together. And then we'll read that, or we'll sing that responsive um, music wherever you see the, the letter R on your screen. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices. Sing with me. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion. And to you shall vows be performed. To you who hear prayer, all flesh shall come because of their sins. When our transgressions prevail over us, you forgive them. Blessed are, tho are those whom you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices. By dread deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation, who is the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, who by your strength established the mountains being girded with might. Who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples, so that those who dwell at earth's farthest bounds are afraid at your signs. You make the morning and the evening resound with joy. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide its grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. The tracks of your chariot drip with fatness. The pastures of the wilderness drip. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices. Amen.
A reading from the 17th chapter of Luke. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Here ends our gospel reading. Well, friends, as we think about what we are thankful for this week, I want to tell you about one thing that I'm not thankful for. My wife, Valerie's superhuman ability to see bugs. It doesn't matter where we are or what we are doing. If there's a bug nearby, she will see it and she will scream, ah! It could be a tiny bug on the ceiling or a dot on the front door mat. She has super vision when it comes to bugs. One time when I was home, I heard the garage door open and her car pull in, and then I heard that shrill, terrifying scream. So I opened the door to see what happened. Was she being attacked? Did someone come into the garage? No. With her door cracked, she yelled, there's a spider on the floor and he's trying to kill me. A truly life or death situation. I'm forced to play newspaper-wielding knight in blue jeans and shoot whatever bug might be present. And I have to do that a lot because Valerie is so good at seeing those little life-threatening bugs. In today's passage, there is a lot of seeing going on. This is an action-packed moment in the ministry of Jesus, and there's a lot to take in and see. We see Jesus on the border between two unfriendly cultures, Galilee and Samaria. Jesus sees men with leprosy off in the distance, and they see him. The men know the rules from Hebrew scriptures. Numbers 5, if you have leprosy, you are unclean, so stay out of the village. And from Leviticus 13, if these men approach someone, they are to shout, unclean, and warn them, warn others in their midst. How dehumanizing. How isolating. So they shout aloud, Jesus, have mercy on us. They were probably begging for alms or monetary donation to support their isolated community. Only a priest could declare these men clean. Only then could they rejoin their communities. But people would always remember them and see them for who they were, sick, unsafe, forever different. Jesus, who is not a priest, sees these men and tells them to go to the priest. The ten leave, but one sees something that changes his life forever. He saw that he was healed. And he kneels to praise Jesus with joy and gratitude. Jesus sees that only one has returned, only the foreigner, only the Samaritan. Go, he says. Your faith has made you well. What do you see in this story? Do you see a frustrated Jesus? Do you see a miracle? Do you spot those onlookers wondering what the commotion is all about? Do you see nine ungrateful lepers who won't give Jesus the time of day? Do you see a foreigner, a Samaritan, 
kneeling and weeping, crying aloud with thankfulness at the feet of Jesus. I see Jesus on the border, traveling through the region between Samaria and Galilee. Only there's not really a a region between these two places. They share an east-west border, and Jesus is heading from the north down to Jerusalem, located in the south. It's a place of history with a faithful, hopeful past of two places that used to be one, one kingdom, one hope, one people, but all that is different now. War and, and conflict, understandings of Torah and worship, ritual, one ancient culture has become divided. Each side considered the opposite side an other unworthy of respect and basic dignity. True Jews considered Samaritans half-breeds. As scholar Janet Hunt writes, the border is a place where one might find oneself unsure of who belonged and, and who didn't. One might be uncertain, untrusting, even a little bit fearful. When traveling from Galilee, Jews would kind of take a roundabout road to avoid Samaria, to not run into their enemy and have to pass them, notice them, look them in the eye. Jews took the long way around Samaria, around Samaritans, but not Jesus. Jesus is in between, where it's uncomfortable uncertain, unknown, and Jesus sees ten men cast out from their families and villages, and he heals them all. It's hard for us to live on the borders of life, to see the world around us and stay in moments of in-between. We're more comfortable seeing a world of black and white than a world of of gray. We want to criticize others for being nuanced. We want simple answers, and we want to offer our unthoughtful declarations and judgments of the world around us. All cops are good. All cops are bad. All protesters are stupid. All people on public assistance are lazy. All Bobcat fans are dummies. All Grizzly fans are dummies. (laughs) All Californians are terrible, right? That's one we hear all the time. All conservatives are ignorant. All liberals are careless. All people in prison are bad people. Or in the case of my wife, all bugs are scary. But Jesus, Jesus travels on the border, calling us to see as he sees, with a faithful vision that offers hope and and mercy to all people, Jew and Samaritan, thankful or not. Jesus lives at the in-between. He sees people differently. The film Patch Adams comes to mind as we think about seeing differently. Patch Adams, you've probably seen it, is a story about a man, Patch, played by Robin Williams, who battles the medical school status quo, and he encourages doctors to care about patients as as whole persons, not just as diagnoses or problems. Early in the film, Patch checks himself into a mental health hospital, and one of the residents, an elderly eccentric man, greets him, holds up fingers, and asks Patch, You know, how many do you see? Patch says, four. I see four. No, no, you only see four because you're focusing on the problem. Look past the problem to find the solution. So Patch concentrates really hard, looks at the four fingers in front of him, and only counts four. The eccentric man exclaims, look past the problem. So instead of looking at the fingers, Patch begins to focus on the man's face, looking past the fingers to see that elderly eccentric neighbor. 
as he does this, his vision changes and he sees not four, but eight fingers. He sees the person behind the fingers. And at that moment, his vision begins to change. Rabbi Harold Kushner reminds us that religion is not primarily a set of beliefs, a collection of prayers, or a series of rituals. Religion is first and foremost a way of seeing. It can't change the facts about the world that we live in, but it does change the way that we see those facts. And that in and of itself can make all the difference. In the interaction between Jesus and the men with leprosy, seeing is always about more than physical sight. Jesus could have witnessed the men with leprosy and just kept walking. The facts, they were Samaritans. They were problems. The men could have caught a glimpse of Jesus and ignored him. The facts, he was a Jew. He was an other, an enemy. But that's not what happened. Jesus met the men and recognized an opportunity to be merciful toward another person. One of the men, after encountering Jesus, saw that he had been healed and saw that God's mercy had blessed his body and his life. And like Patch Adams, he began to see things differently. He began to see a future. He offered praise to God out of abundant gratitude. So the question for us is, what do you see? And not just what do you see, but what do you do when you see it? Sometimes a person who is hurting or suffering isn't on our radar. We can't see them as Jesus saw them. We don't realize that a family member who brings up politics at the Thanksgiving table is actually speaking from a place of fear about their future or their job or their community. We don't see that a child in the classroom who isn't making good grades is actually a child experiencing hunger because of lack of nutrition. We think the clerk at the store behind the cash register is being rude or snippy. We don't see the person who is living a battle against depression or who has to work two part-time jobs on the front line in the midst of a pandemic and barely able to keep food on the table. What do we see? Who do we see? And more importantly, what do you do when you see it? Jesus sees a person with a need and he acts with mercy. The man who was healed saw God's mercy from Jesus and he falls down on his face. The tension of Jew versus Samaritan, differences in worship, beliefs, politics even, none of that mattered because the man began to see with the vision of Jesus a vision aware of mercy and and compassion and thankfulness, all because Jesus stood on the border at an in-between place, putting himself where he could offer mercy and hope and dignity to his neighbor. Now, I can't cleanse like Jesus, and you probably can't either. But this Thanksgiving... I'm thankful that Jesus sees me differently than I see myself. He sees a child of God, a sibling in need of of mercy and grace. That reminds me of how important it is to see others like Jesus sees me. We can't cleanse people, but we can go to those in-between places and speak up during those tense, awkward in between moments, we can walk on the border and make peace in our families and our communities. We can stop seeing each other as an other and instead offer a healing presence and be merciful to one another. 
whether mercy is needed in our world, in our church, or even at the grocery store checkout. So as we express our thankfulness to God this week for God's abundant blessings, may our vision be renewed as neighbor, for our neighbors as Jesus sees them, not divided, not as enemies, not as others, but as beloved children of God. Amen. Each year at our Thanksgiving worship service, uh, we take an offering for some sort of local ministry. Frequently, it's the Columbia Falls Food Bank. And this year, um, our offering is going to go towards the food bank. Uh, the only trouble is, is we're not all gathered together to pass an offering plate around. So, uh, so we really encourage you to send a financial donation to the Columbia Falls Food Bank. You'll see the address for it uh, in a moment. Uh, but just be aware that until the end of November, uh, Town Pump Food Stores is, is matching uh, all financial contributions to the, the food bank. So we've put together a video uh, interview with uh, co-director Ann Bomer of the Columbia Falls Food Bank so that you can learn more about it and, and just understand this great ministry that we have here in Columbia Falls. And so an invitation for the offering. From the bounty of our lives, let us bring forth our gifts for the benefit of our community. Let us give generously as we have been given too generously, for we are all children of God. My name is Ann Bomer, and my role here is co-director, co-manager with my mother, Jan Von Lindern. I've probably been co-manager for about three years. I believe it started in the mid 80s. I know my mom, I think, got started with it in 1986. So I've kind of grown up with the food bank because they've been in a lot of different buildings in Columbia Falls um, until they settled on this building. 2009 is when they built this building okay. and it was donated to us, um, fully paid for. Wow. And the closed closet actually donated the property 
to us. Um, and that was just this building, and then we later built the warehouse. We added on after a couple of years. And then now we've recently purchased the property next to us, um, the empty lot, um, okay. just in case future needs. Okay, we do have two walk-in coolers, two walk-in freezers, and they're both full, which is wonderful. It's very good right now. Um, we have lots of turkeys. Yeah, and then we just have, we have a prep room, a kitchen prep room, where we bag sugar and flour and rice, that kind of thing. And we have, you know, the restroom's an office, a waiting room, and then this is our work room. There are several food banks in the Flathead Valley. Anne tells us which population this food bank serves. The community of Columbia Falls. And, and they do come in and go through an interview process. So it's based on their income. And we have the government poverty guidelines. Here we see a picture of the food bank's warehouse. I was really curious about how the pandemic has affected the need out there. You know, <laughs> It hadn't really changed a whole lot, even with COVID. Okay. And actually, you know, over the summer, when all the other food banks were just swarming and, and we really had less numbers. I don't know why that was. Mm -hmm. And we hit September and boom, our numbers climbed. Um, okay. So we've been serving anywhere from 120 to 130 families a week. While Ann and I were talking, some rowdy guys from the Catholic Church came by with a donation. I asked Anne where the food comes from for the food bank. Um, well, a lot of it comes from the Columbia Falls community. We have a wonderful community here. Um, lots of donations, um, both non-perishable and monetary donations. Um, and then we also belong to Montana Food Bank Network. Um, and we pay so much a year to belong to them. And every six weeks they deliver a semi um, of food to us, uh, yeah, yeah, that can be just canned goods, um, frozen meat products, um, frozen fruit sometimes, things like that. Okay. Super One and Smiths are really good about donating. You get their um, bread and milk and yogurt, that kind of thing. That's it's expired, but it's still good. They just yeah. can't sell it, and so they're very good about getting that to us. And we have we have pickup guys that go and pick that up for us um, pretty much every day of the week. This is one of the two walk-in freezers at the food bank. Anne tells us what the most useful food donations are. Um, you know, it varies from time to time, but um, any of your non-perishables, so your, your canned fruit, your canned vegetables, um, cereal is, a, is a, you know, a bigger item, it's more expensive, and so your canned ravioli for the kiddos, canned spaghettios, um, mac and cheese, peanut butter and jelly is another, and um, syrup and pancake mix. The Columbia Falls Food Bank receives an outpouring of support during the holidays, but what other times of the year is there a great need? Most in need would probably be springtime, summer. Uh -huh. um, people are busy doing, you know, their thing, and, and it's just, um, yeah, we okay. kind of get forgotten in, in those months. And, um, yeah, where the holidays, everybody's wanting to give, and it's great. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, typically in the spring, summer months, we, we tend to dry up. Um, you know, however, that brings me to the Town Pump um, Foundation food drive that they do for the food banks all over. Um, and that, that truly helps us get through summer. Um, they match us up to $12,000 from September through the end of November. Okay. And so that, that's huge for us. So we'll still have a few more days to get our financial donations in. We do, and you can donate to us directly. And we keep track of all our receipts and we send a copy of that to the Town Pump Foundation. Um, or you can donate if you're getting fuel at one of the Town Pump stores in Columbia Falls. Um, and then that, that will go to us. And we just want to say thank you to our community. Without the community's help, we wouldn't be able to help as many people. So. Thank you, Columbia Falls Food Bank, for your ministry to Feed the Hungry. And to your leadership, Jan von Lindern and Ann Bomer and all of your volunteers. If any of you are in need of the food bank services, they're open Mondays, 5 to 6.30 p.m. and Tuesdays, 9.30 a.m. to noon. Remember, you can have your financial donations to the food bank matched by Town Pump if they're received by the end of this month. Please give. Thank you. Please join me in our offering prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give this day to our community food bank 
a place where bellies are filled and hearts are warmed, where children are nourished and families are sustained. Bless our gifts and the resources we give to our neighbors. Let these gifts be put to work in service to our community, that all our hearts might discover joy, gratitude, wholeness, and healing. In Christ we pray. Amen. During the prayers of intercession, at the conclusion of each petition, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Let us pray. Gracious God, you send from your abundance the people, talents, and resources needed for all the ministries of your church. We give thanks for the work you have accomplished through your people, and we pray for your continued blessings in our ministry together. Especially today, we give you thanks for the opportunities that we have as a Columbia Falls United Methodist Church and our Savior's Lutheran Church to work cooperatively uh, for your glory and for your people. We pray that you would bless all of our efforts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bountiful God, you feed us through the richness of the land, water, sunlight, and ample crops. Bless all those who cultivate the land to bring forth its bounty, especially farmers and migrant workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you order our lives by your providence. We give you thanks for laws, infrastructure, and leadership that structure and support our human endeavors. Align our purposes with your own, that all our undertakings might bring you glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you open our hearts in compassion for one another. We give you thanks for the care and healing received through the hands and feet of your servants. Send us to love those most need of your mercy. We take this moment to name before you uh, those who are in need of your mercy, of your healing. We pray for good health for all. We pray for strength and perseverance for health care workers. We give you thanks for the amazing ways that you work in your creation, the ways that you work through science and the development of a vaccine to the coronavirus. We pray that you would bless those efforts and the efforts to, dis to distribute the vaccine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hospitable God, you connect and strengthen us through meals and conversation with family and friends. In this time of thanksgiving, steer us from passive receiving to active response, from old quarrels to reconciliation, and from overconsumption to true gratitude. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for the love and care we have received from saints who have gone before us. By their example, enrich the generosity of our witness to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all your creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment, uh, wherever you are and with whomever you're watching this uh, worship service, to share God's peace. Um, if you're watching on one of the apps where you can type in a comment of God's peace, feel free to do so at this time. But the peace of the Lord be with you always. God's peace, Jared. And peace be with you. <laughs> Thank you. Friends, I invite you now to gather your communion supplies and join me in our traditional um, liturgy 
for um, Holy Communion now. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. By your appointment, the seasons come and go. You bring forth bread from the earth and you create fruit from the vine. You've made us in your image and given us dominion over the world. Earth has yielded its treasure and from your hand we have received blessing upon blessing. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name now and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, Though he was rich, yet for our sake he became poor. When hungry and tempted, he refused to make bread for himself, that he might be the bread of life for others. When the multitudes were hungry, he fed them. He broke bread with the outcast, but drove the greedy out of the temple. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as together we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry into all the world until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast together at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in this your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the bread of life. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the blood of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Amen. Friends, now I invite you in this sacred moment to partake of communion. If you're with someone else, I invite you to offer the other person safely the bread and the juice or tea or whatever you're using, and then reverse roles so that you are truly the receiver today, receiving in um, symbolism of God's abundant way that we receive God's grace.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that now we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Let all God's people say together, amen. Thank you for joining us for this worship service. Uh, I hope it's been a time of blessing for you, and I hope it's been a time that uh, is enriching your Thanksgiving experience. Um, I'm especially thankful for the cooperative ecumenical ministry where our, my congregation is able to do with uh, Columbia Falls United Methodist Church. I'm very happy uh, to welcome into Columbia Falls Pastor Jared Stein. It's just wonderful to do ministry with you, Pastor Jared, and thank you for hosting uh, this service today. So blessings to you all. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.